is amazing to see these incredible renovations that have been happening to this hotel. But this isn't the first time that the Fairmont Olympic Hotel has been renovated in its long, long history. So we recently caught up with our favorite historian, Felix Bennell, to find out what's behind the walls. Well, Felix, I'm so excited to talk about this most iconic place in Seattle. Now, the hotel didn't start as the Fairmont. What was there in the beginning? Well, it was originally called the Olympic Hotel, and it opened on December 6th, 1924. That grand opening party was probably the biggest event the city had seen, maybe in its history to that point. Wow. Something like 2,500 people there, all decked out in their finest 1920s clothing. And it wasn't like they were pretending it was the 20s. It actually really was the 20s. <laughs> and there was all kinds of food and drink, dance and live bands going on in four uh, different ballrooms. A radio station broadcast five hours of live coverage, live music and speeches and things from the from the hotel that night in December 1924. But before the hotel was there, that's where the University of Washington was for most of the uh, 19th century. Arthur Denny, one of the original founders of the city, had donated his land to create the university. And they had built this little kind of shabby wooden building that was there from 1861 to the 1890s. The UW moved to where it is now at Montlake. And rather than selling the land, I mean, they couldn't unload it. There was a financial depression underway. So they don't get all the credit for being so smart, but they held on to that 10 acres of property. And it's, of course, worth millions and millions of dollars now. And they had contracted with a local group to develop it and build all these different skyscrapers and things. It became this kind of a city within a city. It was really the um, kind of the cradle or the birthplace of the modern downtown Seattle that we take for granted now. It all begins right there around where the Olympic Hotel or the, or the Fairmont Olympic Hotel is. <laughs> That is magic. That is an incredible story. So take me back again to that area, the hotel and the city that is growing around it. What, what else is there? Well, when that 10 acres was vacated by the university, they mapped out a plan. They brought in a special firm from New York who did something that hadn't been done really in any American city at that point. They mapped out a plan for building a city within a city. They built three little skyscrapers, little buildings, White Henry and Stewart building, right where Rainier Tower is now in Rainier mm -hmm. Square, where Rainier Square used to be. And then they built the Cobb Building, which is still standing. It was a special medical dental building, probably the, one of the first of its kind in the country, built specifically to house the offices of dentists and doctors. And then they mapped out the spot where the Olympic Hotel eventually was built. They thought they would put a department store. This is like as early as 1906, 1907. It was pretty revolutionary to think if we build a department store, it will attract people to our development. In, in, in that time, downtown was really where Pioneer Square is now. Where the Olympic Hotel is, the Fairmont Olympic Hotel, and where they were building these things in the early 20th century, that was really far north. It wasn't quite the suburbs, but it was very remote compared to the rest of what people thought of as downtown Seattle. So this, this firm from New York and with the University of Washington supporting it and these local developers pulling together local support for it, they created this crazy little modern sort of metro metropolitan metropolis area right in what was a pretty young city. And they actually, they called themselves a the Metropolitan Building Corp. That's, and that they called that the Metropolitan Track. This word metropolitan is mixed through all the history of that area. And that's why they called the hockey team the Metropolitans. We had a oh. hockey team 100 years ago that won the first, the first American team to win the Stanley Cup. They were called the Metropolitans because they were named after the building company that was building all that stuff, like, like eventually the Olympic Hotel. This is so fascinating. It's like a utopia in a metropolis. This is amazing. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like the business of the of that area was always about business. It was, a, it was built for business people, built to conduct business, and built to attract business people who wanted needed a place to stay in a modern hotel. And that's why the, the original Olympic Hotel had all these connections for telegraphs and telephones and everything that a, a 1920s business person needed to stay in touch with the home office or people back at home where they where they traveled great distance from. Fascinating. But it wasn't just business. The theater was also there. Tell me about how the old Metropolitan Theater was part of this complex and yeah. what happened there. Well, when they went to design and build where the, the Olympic Hotel in the early 20s, there was already a theater there where that circular driveway is now right off of University Street. That was the location of something called the Metropolitan Theater named after the Metropolitan Building Company. It was a place for live theater. It was for, they could show movies there. But all of the great actors and actresses of the day, like Catherine Cornell, who's nobody remembers anymore, even Orson Welles came through there as a 16-year-old in the 30s and performed in that little theater that was in the, in the Metropolitan Theater. So it made this really nice sort of connection to the back door of where the hotel was to have this big entertainment complex there as well. Of course, you get to the 1950s, and they're looking at re reinventing the Olympic Hotel the way they've done almost every 25 years to the Olympic Hotel. They thought, let's create a whole new circular driveway it means tearing down the old theater unfortunately but they created mm. this completely modern new entrance which if nobody told you you would assume that had always been the main entrance to the hotel with that circular driveway but in reality 
the main entrance is over on the Seneca Street side of the building, and it's 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 much more um, it's, it's it's much more sedate when you go through that Seneca Street entrance. You're walking right into the main lobby, but yeah. it seems like you're going through the back door. They really were able to completely change the look and feel of that building just by moving things around and building that circular driveway. Unreal. I'm sad that the theater is gone, but it really is a sight to behold. Um, if these walls, bars, rooms, if they could talk and talk about what took place, what happened, what was planned there, what things went on? Well, there's a couple of really cool eras. One of my favorites is World War II. When that theater is still out there, almost every celebrity you can name came through Seattle at one point or another from 1942 to 1945 selling war bonds. They would hold big rallies out in the middle of University Street between 4th and 5th, right next to where the hotel is, at a place called Victory Square. There's old photographs of Bob Hope standing on a stage with thousands of people gathered around, you know, um, Lana Turner, all these different people came through town, Carol Lombard, all these famous Hollywood celebrities came through to attract people down to downtown Seattle so they would buy war bonds to support the war effort. And when you do come visit the Fairmont, come up and check out the mezzanine because there's incredible old pictures and documents that you can see there, including what the room prices cost when the hotel first opened. Incredible.